The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Everybody and welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy, brought to you by Captain America Civil War in theaters now. I'm your millest brother, Ant Man. I'm your, I almost said millest brother, but that would be a lie. I'm the sweet baby brother, Griffin. That's a fucking lie. That is my branding. I mean, uh oh, we got a civil war of our own, brother against brother. I want to be the middlest brother. I want to switch ages with Travis. And I think I found a witch on the internet that can do that for me. We could do uh, it through cryogenic freezing, much like, spoiler alert, the Winter Soldier Bucky Barnes. Captain America Civil War pits Captain America Is this an against, official watch? Is this an official Civil this War This is watch? an official Captain America Civil War right, watch. You know what that means? Let me scoop up all my DVD copies of Kung Fu Panda 3 and throw them right into the burn, burnerator. We uh, should also what? say that nothing we're about to say should be taken as fact. Yep. <laughs> I don't want anyone yelling at me about spoilers because none of this is true. Now let's let's give a let me give a straight recap of the plot and then we'll get into some jokes about okay. it. Okay, okay, just to get set the ground rules. Okay, so Iron Man loves slaves, uh huh, uh-huh. and he wants nothing more than to keep his massive army of exactly. slaves. Who do you Plus, think builds? That's how he made all of his money off of his plantations. And who do you right. think builds all of his many many robotic armor? suits for him it's not him and it's not it's pepper not it's not pepper Potts. uh yeah it's not pepper Potts. it's it's iron man and he's a slaver and he loves slaves captain america's like not on my watch girlfriend and they get into a big scrap about it mm-hmm. some of the superheroes love slaves yeah a lot like, of it's them, like, weird really, really, well, some really. of them yeah some of them do not the ones all. you would expect right slave man definitely uh, definitely okay Racist, yeah. ra- uh, Dr. Racist. Mm-hmm. He definitely loves slaves. Yeah. Um, but there are some surprises in the there, gentrifier. too. The gentrifier. Uh, yeah. Cheap, Love slavery. Cheap, lab- cheap labor g- woman. The overseer. The overseer. And, of course, Ant-Man, which is like, what? So weird. Yeah. What? What? Well, You're you have to know that Ant stands the- for antebellum. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. We're off to the races. <laughs> uh, so that's the film, Captain America: Civil War. Watch. I guess the question on everybody's mind is, Travis, how many times have you seen it? Uh, Sixteen, Justin. Now, is those just back to back viewings? Because no, they were just one just chunk at a time. I had to take breaks because it was too intense. The racism was a little. It kind of like filled up the theater with a weird, yeah. a weird energy. Um, well. I got, especially it was when like the a race, Trump rally in there. It was really yeah. off-putting. Especially when the racists win. Yeah. That's yeah. A, and I don't want to spoil anything, but like racism is not only – it's like codified by the end of it. They put it in the Constitution. Yeah. And I don't think that they should do And that Iron Man really. wrote it, and he, he was wearing the Iron Man suit when he wrote it by pen, so it's almost illegible. Which like I think constitutional scholars are going to be arguing, like, is that a comma or is it a, a apostrophe or is it a J? That's how bad – Iron Man, when in his suit, his penmanship is. Just think about mm-hmm. it. Just think about it. You would not sign a lot of documents in there. I think the weirdest part is at the end when like Bruce Banner is like walking away sadly and he looks at the camera and says, Who knew that the Hulk's one weakness was racism? Yeah. And it's then he, really weird. But and like then he dies. powerful. Yeah. Um all right, boys, let's we gotta get it we gotta talk about it. Whose team are you on? Iron Man or Captain America? Which well, one was I the mean, racist def- team? Yeah, the one that's not racist, I guess, right? I'm going to say Definitely. the non-racist team. I mean, um, I do love Ant-Man. Yeah, I mean, I love Ant-Man. Yeah, that's the <laughs> problem is Paul Rudd puts yeah. on a great character portrayal of Ant, the Ant-Man. It, but okay, the, pro- let me the get, problem let me is- Let me gauge the, your guys, your guys' opinion. Is yeah. Paul Rudd America's most lovable racist? Um, I don't want to espouse that sort of- sentence he's he's playing a role he's playing I a mean, role it's not he's him. Like, oh damn no i mean as his portrayal does he make ant-man america's most love although you know what I, you know what i heard he was on some on set he was actually kind of difficult to work with which i can't even imagine because it is 
It is him. But I was worried. I think I've heard that. I think I've heard in the magazines that he was on some Jared Leto shit. Just like okay. being kind of racially charged. He also insisted that everyone be bigger than him. Which is so weird. That's how they did that. Do you know that they did that effect? Yeah. <laughs> by, um, and it's very wasteful. Yeah. But they made every, when he shrinks, they just made, made everything big, around him very a big. big. A yeah, big like gun. In the, the Hobbit. Yeah, except like times a billion. Because it's like, yeah. make a gun the size of a building, make an Anthony Mackie the size of a town. And it's mm-hmm. all practical. And it's all like, practical. Like, there's a giant, like, if you go to um, Muncie, there's a giant uh, 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 statue of Anthony Mackie. And it's like, well, we just didn't have anything else to we, do. Where are we going to yeah, put it? That's just where they left the biomech suit that they put regular sized Anthony Mackie <sighs> in. All right. This bit, this next segment's for all the comic book nerds out there. Who's your favorite comic book hero cameo in this one? Cause mine was the, what well, mine was red boy who teamed up with iron man, which was a little bit disappointing. Um, but I loved, I, I was surprised to see red boy in there. He had such a limited run in image comics comics i i like the cat guy which one the the cat guy kitty cat man cat, kitty cat man yeah kitty cat man jumped around really good he jumped around fast and strong and yeah. at one point he jumped and i was like "Ooh, good kitty and it was yeah. it was uh pretty cool i like the great emancipate thor which was weird uh, yeah uh yeah thor in an abraham lincoln costume like as if we wouldn't notice oh i know? thought that that was abraham lincoln had picked up thor's hammer no they, oh they, i misread that abraham lincoln if any okay let me say this if you're not presidents are we able and uh worthy to be the power of molnir it would definitely be abraham be lincoln. A, did you just yeah. say molnir like it was french molnir. like it was a french philosopher you pronounce it uh, what do you say, Trav? Mjolnir, the hammer. Mjolnir. Doi, 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 I'm Trav. Mjolnir. 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 That's just a little <laughs> joke I like to make to teach people about near and far. <laughs> Mjolnir. Um, I guess uh, it, the the side I'm on is Captain America Civil War Two. How about it, Hollywood? I'm ready. I'm not getting out of my chair until it shows up on the screen. I want Captain America in Civil War 2 to just be like, I'm mad at you again. Well, I'm mad at you again. I'm still mad at you from the first time. I'm Red Boy. Just kidding. Red Boy dies in the first one. <laughs> um, Kitty Cat sh- Man eats him and then spits Kitty him Kitty Cat back Man up. eats him a whole. Let's, um, God, we can't go an episode spits without out a four. Us. Yeah. Uh, can we do some advice? Um, Yes. But go see Captain America Civil War. Support indie projects. Support indie um, comics. It, local. Happy free comic book movie day. Go see it. It's free. <laughs> uh, hey, brothers. I, I went to, to free comic all. book day, by the way. And before I, I lay waste to free comic book day, I spent like $150 at my comic book shop. So I'm supporting the whole industry, I guess. Um I had never done free comic book day and I rolled up. I was like, free comics, here they come. And they're like, here's an Archie little sampler. It's three pages long. It's like, I can't finish to this. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's horse apples. I got that same Archie and it's the entire first episode. And it's a bold new direction for the franchise. Well, damn, you put me on blast. Yeah, maybe if you're going to make a joke, it should be about something. I'm just, I guess I just real. prefer graphic novels, you know, something with a little bit more meat and heft to it. A little bit more no. seriousness. Less play play. You know what I like is Saga. You guys read Saga? Fuck yeah, Saga. It's a good book. Did uh, you buy any Saga? No, I bought that new Hawkeye. Let's uh, move on, though. Hell yeah. My spouse and I will be attending a rather unconventional wedding and weekend retreat. The bride and groom are total hippies, and according to the invitation, we can expect such activities as clothing, optional pool parties, and all night unspecified, quote, ritual. Justin, you added a fucking Yogi Bear extra syllable to the word activities, and I'm going <laughs> to... Activities? Th- activities. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to participate in the activities. Excuse me. I'm Antebellum my, Man. Where can I put my cane? I'm <laughs> Antebellum Man. I'm here for the activities. <laughs> I would like a Momo Mojito. You know, the famous the Southern drink, the Momo Mojito. <laughs> Momo Mojito. All right. Mojito Momo. All here right, go. go on. I got Tommy Hilfiger trunks. All right. <laughs> but my real quandary is what to wear. <laughs> the requested attire for the ceremony is, quote, elegant kooky. That is not a thing. That's not. 
That's some My Fair Wedding with David Tutera, B- Candace Chic bullshit. That's not anything. I need some. It's their wedding, Griffin. I need some style advice, brothers. Can I get some specific suggestions for elegant, kooky men's and women's clothing that will be wedding appropriate? That's from Wacky Wedding Wardrobe Woes in Washington. And let's not kid around. That place is going to be a Zoot Suit Riot. I mean, one hundred percent. It's going to be right? amazing. I want. Okay, I, I also just want to like jump right out there and say I don't have a problem with you saying I want my wedding. I want people to wear like eccentric, kooky attire. But when you say a term like elegant, kooky, that's just not a fit. Like that's just not a classification. It's going to be a fucking Paula Poundstone cosplay convention up in this shit. Yeah, you might as well just say like. I, I, I want it to be wacky formal. Like, what is that? Does that mean I show up in a tuxedo t-shirt? Does that mean I wear my suit backwards? Does that mean that it's like black tie and also silk tunic? This is like, why I put them. I don't know. This is, it's your wedding day. Chase your bliss. Do whatever. But the the this is one thing where your bliss can't be chased. You need to let your cha- your bliss run away. And then you chase your pragmatism because this is an, a direction that you are giving literally every person that's coming to your wedding. An elegant kooky doesn't mean a fucking thing. It doesn't fucking doesn't mean, mean anything. anything. It carries no connotation whatsoever. I would definitely like to me. I would definitely want to like wear basically everything F. Murray Abraham Warren Amadeus. Like that would okay, def- like yeah. this would be my one chance. Oh, this is fun. Where would you go with it? To definitely get I would go frock. I would have like the the whole the whole look, the powdered wig, that whole fun thing. Maybe like a birds in there, birds in my wig, that kind of thing. Oh yeah. I love yeah, that yeah. style. Um I, I would, think I w- I would go tear away tuxedo and then I would be wearing inspired by the flop house a tux speedo underneath. That's fun. Oh nice. I would go full. I mean, you guys know I would. I already said I would totally pound my stone, um, but I would also have like a little bit of the the mask, like the Cuban Pete scene in there. Mm-hmm. And by which I mean I would I'll, I would be wearing a latex the mask mask. Oh yeah, <laughs> from the mask. Nothing that, says elegant kooky like the mask. But also again, big suit, big suit, big tie, big loud tie, big loud colors, big loud uh, pinstripe suit. I would wear butt a cut out, butt cut out suspenders. I would wear a very regular, normal tux, except when you get like super close, you can see it's all fruit by the foot. Oh, nice. that's pretty yeah. kooky. And every, if you want, and I'm like, and when people get close enough, I just like whisper in the ear, like, want a nibble? Like that. Well, well, want to nibble? Now you're getting into spooky kooky. Yeah. Want a nibble. That's good. I mean, that's kooky's all get out. <laughs> what about like a body paint suit? Okay. I feel like that's elegant kooky. Like I'm trying to think what you gotta get the kooky yeah. and you gotta get the elegant. In that's there. like that's like that. Okay, that's a great look if you're beautiful and cut. And I'm assuming a lot of people at this wedding will be. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. If I show up in a body painted tuxedo, people are just gonna be shouting like that man is made of eels. Yeah. Somebody, somebody, stop him! Uh, Help that man! Can we? Can I just go in a regular suit that I have poured a bunch of soup all over? <laughs> you mean a soup suit? I'm talking about my soup suit, Riot. Riot. Um, Riot! I'm not, I'm, Don't buy a bottle of chunky. It'll be a, a multiple soup situation. I can do chili in my pocket, and then like when I st- when somebody's like, "Does anybody have anything they want to say to stop this wedding?" Which is what they say. Then you you slap your pocket, and like chili comes splatting out all over the place, and people are like, "Griffin, you got to." I like again. that, Griffin, because you're not just a guest; you're the caterer. Yes. If you're going to wear a suit, a soup stained suit, you better hope that everybody's aim with the bird seed at the end is, uh, is, is very really good. great. Yeah. Like, very good. If they're throwing rice and it just sticks to you, you're going to turn into a one man golden grab for birds. When I, was yeah. in, when I was in college and I needed money, I would uh, go to high end parties and I would be naked and I would just like lie down on a big table naked and people would eat not sushi off of my nude body, but just different soups. There's different soups in your, from your crevices, you mean? Well, no, it was just kind of caked on. They had to, like, really scrape it. This is old soup. This is a real dry soup. Like a real dry, old, dry, old, dry like soup. Like powdered soup. And they would have to scrape it off into... I would actually just hold it in my hands for them. The fresh hot soup, I would hold in my hands and just sort of lift up to their mouth. Here you go, sir. Please enjoy. Um, Maybe just wear a regular-ass tuxedo, and then when people say, like, what's the kooky element? Look at them dead in the eye, just like, don't you get it? And then oh, put it like back that. on them. Okay. Make them cook it up. Um, you could also or just like a Marvin the Martian tie. Can you wear a tuxedo top, cargo shorts bottom? 
Oh, that's fun. Ooh, I like that. That's very like eighties, early nineties. When I was like, in, you would see that character in like a, a college comedy. Yeah. I used to do the formal top, shorts, bottom. I discovered that look in middle school a lot, and I, and I wore it a lot. And I, I, I ba- I'm looking back at it now. Let me close my eyes and like really get a picture of my mind's eye because I'm pretty sure. Oh, yep, I did look like Laura Dern in Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about a look that I I know myself I sort of like uh, inde- inde- endeavored into mm. was like a long sleeve plaid with jorts was like one that I know that I definitely had at some point and felt and the weird thing was because it had buttons on it I felt like pretty good about yeah. it <laughs> like yeah like I, look, I mean I'm making a go at this thing called fashion today I was not above in high school I remember at least once probably multiple times wore a dress shirt like a button up dress shirt and tear away pants like tear away workout pants. And I was like, yeah, because I was like in show choir and theater and stuff. So it was cool, you guys, until even like the show choir kids were like, hey, man, <laughs> you need to not. I wore, you need to get that shit together. I wore tearaway pants to gym class just to make it easier on the bullies. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the bullies were just tearing your pants off? But that's yeah, a, they just shred my pants off like pants hyenas. But that's <laughs> it. Like you made it too easy on them and they didn't want to do it anymore. Ah, oh, this isn't even fun anymore. It's like he likes it. Yeah. I did just wear sweatpants and a t-shirt to school forever when I wore, was in gym because I couldn't change in the locker room. So I just wore gym clothes. God. All right. Let's uh, do a Yahoo. Yeah. Please get me out of this it fucking got too pit. real. Yeah. We're all yeah. really deep in this pit, but that's okay because we've been here before. Yeah. Elegant kooky. Uh, this, uh, this one was sent in by Rachel Rosing. Game recognized game. Thank you, Rachel. It's by Yahoo Answers user. Oh, they're anonymous. In the sports martial arts category, they ask, oh, let's give him a name. Uh, Purchase. Purchase, not precious, asks, <clears throat> I want to learn MMA, but I am worried about safety. I know it's a stupid concern, as fighting is not a safe thing to do, but I really want to be able to defend myself without losing all my brain function. How do MMA classes normally deal with average working people who don't go down the professional route as, like, a hobby? I want to learn MMA. I the this, di- the getting hit part I could do without that part. That's actually this is actually not a terrible question because like how do you do M- how do you do like amateur MMA in such a way that you make it clear like I I know I could do it better with harder hitting but I just that's not I where myself I'm, don't, well but just, is this this is predicated is on this, the existence of another person who doesn't want to do the punching part of it and only wants to be hit but is this person concerned about the death toll of mma classes like we lost another one like i it's probably i would have to think this is a concern that has been dealt with before now let me say a teacher going wait no one wants to get hit huh ah damn it i want to go out on a limb and bet that number eight zero though yeah like i'm I'm gonna go yeah it ain't it ain't nothing uh, yeah. When you go to the part where you're training regular, okay, mm. and learn all the moves, and then when it's time to um, uh, spar with a partner, get this, you throw a paper mache version of yourself in the ring. Interesting. That's that. some nin- ninjutsu shit. Yeah. like I, and I would and watch that already, training montage. Yeah, and they're already, like, attacking it. And and punching it and like they 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 punch you in your solar plexus and they're like that's a death blow. Their hand goes clean through you and then they come out and what do they have in their hand? A zagnut. You're full of candy. Oh, that's shit. right. You've self pinnated and that is the safest thing you can do. Because who's going to think about punching when they got a delicious zagnut to enjoy? What I love about that is that I think that movies like Karate Kid have taught us that the the fastest way to win is not to fight, right? Absolutely. So, so you want to skip ahead. Right. So maybe that's what every MMA teacher is waiting for, to have one student who's like, no, you know what? No. And then they, everybody just raises them up on their shoulder, gives them like three black belts, and like just dances them around the place because like they're the only people who have figured out MMA. They're just waiting for like Chuck Liddell to be like, you know what? I don't want to punch anymore. The, and everyone's like, you're, you're the hero you're now. The, you've taught us a valuable lesson. MMA is canceled, everybody. No more MMA. No more. You know what I would they do? They solved it. Why are we even doing this? I would do like in the Sherlock Holmes movie with Robert Downey Jr. 
Mm-hmm. And I would do that okay. thing where like I see do them. You mean like, the only good Sherlock Holmes? Oof. I see the man who I'm fighting start to twist back, and he's shirtless. Should I slow down? And he's shirtless, and he's <laughs> twisting backwards, so like, give me a good old haymaker. And I'm looking at his muscles inside his body, and he's moving in slow motion, and like this like user interface sort of appears over him, and it's mm-hmm. like, weak left ribs, um, imp- it, it, punch impact coming in two seconds, um, uh, blind spot in right eye, and I'm like fucking analyzing all of his data and his weak points and shit, and like checking out his HP. And then like once I've once I've fully scanned him like that, I can dodge all his blows and punch him where it would hurt his body the most. It, it, it just it, occurred to me that like Sherlock Holmes, Robert Downey Sherlock Holmes, basically just has Jarvis again. Yeah, yeah. like he loved having a computer in his head so much. He's like, let's let's do it again, guys. Hey guys, listen, listen to me, RDJ. Listen, I was seen. thinking, can you have a robot in my head again? <laughs> Um, Wouldn't it be great if that scene played out with him analyzing all the week? This is while he was getting punched. Yeah, that would like, probably be more. As the guy's punching him, he's like, poof, weak left eye, poof, limp on the left yeah. leg. <laughs> Travis, I was just in in the pupil state of a note perfect Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, you really show. crunched it. History, history <laughs> will never forgive you for not letting that blossom in from emerge from its chrysalis into the world's most perfect Robert Downey Jr. impression. Do you want to? Is I, it too late to take a second stab? It's gone, baby. Fuck. It's gone. I should clarify. I also liked the young Sherlock Holmes, where there was like the fear toxin, and there and there was a part where like the buns came to life, and like the all the sweets <sighs> were attacking. I don't think. I have the fighting prowess required mm-hmm. to slow motion scan my enemies. Um, but could I make them think that I was to scare them away from me? Like that would be my self defense. Like if I see somebody coming for me with a with a big old barrel of punches that they're about to upend on me, then I can look at them and be like, scanning left eye left eye Lopez, a uh, right ribs, mm-hmm. c- former broke broke left wrist. Um, in in 1996, weak weak left wrist, legs <laughs> legs are soft soft legs. Uh, maybe maybe just start like uh, 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 undiagnosed appendicitis. One punch could kill. Oh and yeah! Like, whoa whoa whoa! I'm out. That would be good. Loose brain. Friend, or what if you went? What if you went psychological, Griffin, and analyzed them psychologically? And you're just like friends and family never loved them, and you just like were instead like throwing out kind of more um, psychological barbs. Dad is a time traveler. Doesn't isn't home very much. <laughs> that's right. My dad is a time traveler. <laughs> At least that's what he tells me uh, How does when he goes for business trips. Um, how about another question? What if you just decided to like you know about cosplaying? What if you like cosfighted? What if you said like, listen, Iron Man, like you got in the ring, got in his head, like, hey, listen, Iron Man. I'm not gonna fight you. I'm your best friend, Captain America. We can't do this. Yeah, I think that'd be hugely distracting. That would be. It's me, Red Boy. Well, fuck, I can't punch Red Boy. <laughs> I'm not gonna punch Red Boy. We're fast friends. On my way to work, I stop at a coffee shop. There is a barista there who, whether he is working or just hanging out on his off hours, stares at me like he wants to murder me and wear my skin every single day. It's majorly creepy and unsettling, and not a great start to my day. What do I do? Do I ignore it? Do I go to a different coffee place that's not as convenient? Do I tell a manager even though I'd feel bad if it got him fired? Creepers need jobs too? And that's from Coffee Conundrum. There's a sandwich shop very close to me that has um, some boys in it that made me feel uncomfortable. Not in like a danger place, but just like they don't respect this sort of social cues that me or anybody else in line at this place puts out and so we have just stopped going to that sandwich place and going Can to a different sandwich place a little place. more a little more color like what do you say yeah um that could be anywhere from like all right him, all right all right, all right, like all right. Just, giggling at you yeah okay uh let's just role play just in your meme uh okay. and i really want you to sort of take your own sort of social needs and desires into uh hey man how's your weekend Wait, am I you? So I'm you? Yes. Okay. I'd like a pepperoni sandwich, please. Oh, cool, man. I'll whip that up for you. And then I'm going to sing like a little song like while I do it, like literally sing a song, like literally sing a song. And I'm going to look up up at you and be like, so how was your weekend? 
Um, uh, how's the sandwich coming? Uh, it was fine. It was fine. Okay, so this isn't going to work, is it? This role play session. <laughs> no, here, let, let me try. Let yeah, me let's, try let's re- I'll recast I'll it. Okay. I'm just, I, I liked Justin better because I know that his like social yeah. social stuff's not as good as your I, I got you. Okay. Uh, hey, man, how was your weekend? Pokemon! All right, fuck you guys. <laughs> Like they have a joyful heart. Like they're approaching the world and their work with a joyful heart, and that's what's making you so uncomfortable. Um, no, it's not. It's bad. It's bad. I because I like that shit. I'm usually into like having a conversation. I love having a conversation with a person. It's just different. There's a funk to it. There's a funk to it. <laughs> It's like a judgment like, funk, like you're going to say the wrong thing. A bit of a judge. Because judg- I've gotten that at a coffee shop before where the the dude or lady or person was very cool. Just very, yeah. And I knew, like, I, I knew that if I was just like, I would just like, there's, especially here in, in, in Los Angeles where, like, I just want a cup of, like, drip coffee. And then they, like, artisanally, like, pour hot water over a single cup brew into a glass pitcher and the whole time they're just like staring at me as they do it as though i'm supposed to be impressed that they can pour water over coffee and then they hand me the coffee and i'm like okay cool and that's six dollars great thank you so in, much in one transaction with these two boys one of them um quoted monty python at me twice that's <laughs> where that's where we're at that's rough. That shouldn't be weaponized. And it, yeah. it but it absolutely, it's been aerosolized and it was sprayed in my fucking face <laughs> and into my Ooh. nose and mouth and in my breath system. Uh, okay. I feel like if you want to keep talking to this, par- going to the store, you have if to. If you want to keep this dating person. this Starbucks, if you want to <laughs> keep in this committed relationship with your local Starbucks, uh, you need to talk to this person and ask them what their fucking story is. That would shut it down, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, di- the problem is I. It, it is impossible for us to calculate uh, whether or not some sort of like flirtation or sexual attraction is like figuring into this. Like, is this someone who is very bad at like who has read uh, the game one too many times and mm-hmm. thinks that like consistent eye contact is hugely is important? Is that a Grisham novel? Yeah, it's a movie where um, I think it's Michael Douglas. Yeah, he like. Uh, is in a big game no, where they I'll, just neg on each other. They just neg each other <laughs> back and forth and back and forth, and at the end he gets thrown off a building. I think the key to making that work, Justin, because I think you're right. I think you have to find a a window of a, like so they're doing something that you can con- like maybe they're reading a paper or like something that you can comment on rather than just walking up to them and going, hello, I'm Steven. Or, you know what I mean? Like, right. You need some, cause if they respond like, yeah, go fuck yourself. Then you're like, Oh, cool. I get exactly what's going on now. Um, but if they do read the situation is whatever interaction you try to have with them, you are flirting with them. And as far as they're concerned, it's on, you do need to pull out and go to a different, a uh, coffee shop from now on. That coffee shop. Is I said, "Fuck that! Don't even give them a fucking chance." It is a consumer-facing business, and you, you're uncomfortable with the the treatment of the consumers, and that's all that matters, baby. Buck stops here because the customer's always right. Consumer's always right. Just so, fucking, do you complain, Griffin? No, you fucking bounce. You go somewhere else and give them their dollars, and maybe somebody will. Just all I need is just a coffee and a banana, and a, have a nice day. That's all I need. Coffee, check. Banana, check. Go fuck yourself. Not a check. I'm gonna go somewhere else. I Gotta actually wouldn't mind nice if I was buying coffee and a banana, and then I handed them the money, and they said, "Okay, thanks. Go fuck yourself." I actually would be okay with that as an interaction. Okay, so Dick, uh, sort of Dick's last cafe. Yeah, I would know exactly where I stood with that coffee shop. Excuse me, fellas. Uh, I need to take a quick sidebar to talk about the pickup artist. No, oh, I think Jesus. the greatest injustice in human history is that we were not producing this show at the same time in synchronicity with a hit series called the pickup artist we would have known that it was gonna about to like ruin fucking everything right just the worst thing then this show if you missed it starred a guy literally named mystery who wore a hat that he definitely wore and if you can look up a picture of mystery's hat you'll very much appreciate what a commitment that yeah. is to his whole steve he mystery I, spelled in the traditional spelling of the name or like mr e uh, that's no, it's just mystery, and his cool. real name is Eric von Markovic. Oh, so, right, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, 
I'm just just super quick. Uh, uh, there were uh, it looks like eight contestants in the first season of The Pickup Artist, where he tried to teach these fellas how to score bibs. And uh, I'm just gonna read. Bib, you they were static. fighting for bibs, like that you put <laughs> they bibs. put dishes bibs. Uh, super quick. Uh, I'm gonna tell you the stat. I'm not gonna tell you their names because who gives a shit. I want to tell you the reasons that they're on the show. Eight quick reasons. Here we go. One freezes up around women. Yeah, Brady. Lacking in self confidence. You just said you weren't going to say their names. I changed my mind. Joe D, the quote friend to girls. <laughs> Joe D, friend to all girls. Pradeep. <laughs> oh, Joe D. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, we're going to go have a picnic tomorrow, and it's going to be great. Oh, I have a picnic plan with Joe D. He's every girl's friend. <laughs> Pradeep overanalyzes and talks too much. Joe W starts off strong, but often fails fast. Scott gets very nervous and stutters around women. Fred, forty year old virgin. Plus five. He's 45. Gotcha. And then okay. lastly, there's Stephen Poon, or Spoon, who does not know how to approach women. He was eliminated first. Hi, I'm Spoon. Wait, get you the get fuck eliminated out. from this game? You get eliminated from the game. Which you'll I guess never a, talk to women. You'll get out of here. be able to talk to women. I feel like we all got eliminated from this game, because even if you miss, I never watch the pickup artists. But I feel like I've, I, on a daily basis, I experience the ripples, the shock waves. That it's sent out yeah. across our cultural landscape. I'm so sad we weren't. Uh, we missed the, the reception on Wikipedia. According to Wikipedia, the initial viewer ratings were disappointing, debuting with only six hundred seventy-seven thousand viewers. Who you are? Because to me, yeah. nobody watched this fucking show. That does not disappoint me. That no, appo- that actually that, makes me feel pretty good. I, that appoints me a major way. <laughs> Griffin is appointed now. I have to been a higher appointed. level. Fuck that show. Fuck everybody. Fuck all those guys. Fuck this show. Fuck mystery. That show was executive produced by J.D. Roth, who you'll remember as the host of Finders Keepers. I'm maybe sorry, bring it back else. on the O network. Maybe on O and I would all watch women. That. Gender flipped pickup artist. Just, oh, but that's the twist is like at the end, like women are judges and they're just like, yeah. okay, behave. Nope. <laughs> you did <Nope>. bad. <laughs> Be a good human being. Oh, oh you nope, failed. Nope, you messed nope, up. No, no, no. Uh, let's take a quick break and go to the money zone. My brother, my brother, me is supported in part by Squarespace. Travis, what the hell is that? Squarespace? Yeah. yeah what the fuck is that? You tried Round Space, right? Yeah. Yeah. And how Round Space makes really shitty, hard to make websites. Mm-hmm. Well, Squarespace makes easy, good websites. <laughs> Why did they do that the first time around? <laughs> well, because they weren't sure what sh- they were like. Let's cut corners, <laughs> and they made Round Space. <laughs> And then they said, you know what? Slap those corners back on there. That's where all the programming was. Yeah. And um, they glued the corners back on and they made Squarespace. Squarespace. Round Space, by um, the way. Round Space is a, um, is a UK based professional training and coaching outfit. <laughs> and you just oh, really no. put them in the fucking trash, didn't you? Whoops. Yeah, or in the winner circle. You're welcome for the free mention. Back to Squarespace, though. Squarespace is uh, host to the McElroyShows.com website where you can find all of the McElroy projects, including uh, YouTube stuff and That's other weird. podcasts. This feels like a, a commercial for us. Commercial almost. for us. Well, no, but yeah, hear weird. me out. Good twist. Because I, uh, when I started it, I, I envisioned, like, well, this is going to be tough, so I'll just put a couple links on there. And then as I was doing it, I realized how – not only easy, but also like versatile it was. Like the the things you're able to do with very, very, very little um expertise and knowledge of what you're doing and end up with a very professional looking website. Um that people have asked me like, well, who did this? And I was like, I did it in about two hours. And I'm able to jump in and make edits and improve things and add new stuff on a whim. And it's so fast and easy and and also I have, you know, had professional websites made before, and as a cost-effective option, Squarespace really, really delivers. Um, I highly recommend it, and you can start a free trial today if you go to squarespace.com slash mybrother um, and check it out. You can start a trial without having to pay for anything, and then if you're like, you know what, I really like the website, I really like the way this is looking, you pay to publish, and trust me, you won't regret it. Squarespace. Nope. You should. Squarespace. Squarespace? You should Squarespace. (laughs) Um, Get your Squarespace on your left now. I want to tell you all about Club W. It's an exclusive club, by which I mean you can get into it if you go to Club W. 
and go to their website and sign up for it. But it's it is still it's very exclusive um, because what does that W stand for? Weapons. What they, they send you a new weapon every week. This week I got a big old club, and it's got it's got a gun in the handle of it. It's a gun club. No, not that's true. true. Um, no, true. no, the W actually stands for Winslow. It is a club, and it's all we all get together every week and we talk about our favorite sort of family matters stuff. Just okay. right. also not true. Not true. Tell the truth. Okay, Club W is an exclusive club. We talk about family matters, guys. I can't. I no, can't. It's not. It's a. Cl- it's it's about wine. It is a wine club. It's Griffin, a wine you thing. You fucking know that. Cl- a club W, uh, a, it allows you to sort of get past all of the stuff where you're shopping for wine and you don't know what any of the words or uh, like flavor profiles mean, and you just want some wine to have with your fish or your steak or whatever. Uh, but you want something good. Uh, well, Club W's got your back. It's a revolutionary new wine club that sends wine directly to your door. It saves you all the trips to the grocery store, all the like being awkward standing in the wine aisle just like picking up bottles and looking at them and pretending to know what the fuck they're all about um club w asks you uh, a six question quiz and then it sort of determines what your palate is based on that quiz so every bottle that you get is perfectly tailored to your tastes uh it works directly with vineyards cuts out the middlemen saves you money and it's got a no risk guarantee that you will love drinking what they send you uh, right now, Club W is offering listeners $20 off your first order if you go to clubw.com slash mybrother. All one word. Again, clubw.com slash mybrother. It gets better. They'll pay for for your shipping on orders of four bottles or more. So take something off your to-do list. You, you need some wine? Just go to clubw.com slash mybrother. Get $20 off your first order now. It's clubw.com slash mybrother. Here's a message to Emily Lloyd from Liam S. Smith, and it reads, Dear Emily, a.k.a. Reagan, I hope this belated, you know it, homie, birthday message fills you with delight and reminds you that you have peeps in your corner all the way across the sea. Happy birthday. I hope you and Patty keep killing it in the UK. Never forget, you are Emily Lloyd. That's so fucking fresh, isn't it? Wow. Never forget you are Emily Lloyd. In all things, you are Emily Lloyd. You are constant as the northern star. It's a, that's you so are. good that for a second there, I thought I was Emily Lloyd. No. She Today, Lloyd. we are all Emily Lloyd. Lots of love, your pal Liam. You are Emily Lloyd. You are And the you Polaris. are Emily Lloyd. And you are Emily Lloyd. No, and you. One. No. Okay. No. You are, the, you are the northern star, the Polaris around which all of us must navigate. You are Emily Lloyd. Um, this is actually for, or is from your pal Liam and everyone else, but they didn't pay for this message. I like that, Liam. Fuck them. Yep. Put up or, yep. shut, put up or shut up. Uh, got another message here. This one's for Jer and Richie, and it's from Sion. Cyan? Cyan. Cyan. Sia. By the Chandelier singer. Uh, Jer and Richie, this message is from Sion, who says... This is what it would feel like if the Brothers McRoy knew you existed. Please enjoy this fleeting moment of recognition. <laughs> of recognition. Yep. Can the three of us just sort of say our favorite thing about Jaron Ritchie? Uh, their names sound really good when you say them together. Sure. They have a good mouthfeel. Jer and Ritchie. Um, I like the way that they're always together. Like, you never just see Jer, you never just mm-hmm. see Ritchie. It's a really pretty sweet package deal. Jer, yeah. Jer can jump really high. And Richie mm-hmm. is gluten intolerant. Yeah. Which Jared I like. can jump really high. more bread for me. Jared can jump really high, and Richie can duck really fast. It makes for a lot of really fun antics Yeah, they do like antics and stuff. You're just like walking in the movie theater, and then all of a sudden you look behind you and just whoop, 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 whoop. New to Maximum Fun, the Beef and Dairy Network podcast. The number one podcast for those involved or just interested in the production of beef animals and dairy herds. All sponsored by Grazex, the latest grass replacement pellet from Mitchells. If it's not Mitchells, get back in the truck. Find us at MaximumFun.org or on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast from. And if it's not clear, this is a comedy podcast. Beef out. Um, Recently, I helped I, a friend move. Can I? Working for, no. What? Uh, I think I want to do Yahoo. Okay, go for it. Actually, I think I want to... Somebody sent me a tweet. Okay. And it's, that's not really... Well, no, it's pretty... This tweet is pretty dark. Um, I don't know if I should say the user or not. Let's talk about it first, and we can say, like, if we want to, like, mention the user's name. Um, but it, it's a picture of... Apparently, it's it's very dark, but apparently it's a picture of them just, like, smoking a joint. Um, and they said, uh, Good Games, Inc., which is almost the name of the video, po- video game podcast I do with Nick Robinson at Polygon. That's Cool Games, Inc. 
um, what I'm doing while listening to your podcast, enjoying a jazz cigarette at home. And it's just like a picture of them like having, having rolling, smoking up a duper. Um, and then I sort of went through their account, and that's uh, exclusively this person's activities. Uh, trends like these, what I'm doing while listening to your pa- podcast, getting some exercise, playing some b-ball. And sure enough, here's a picture of a basketball court. Uh, got one, oh no, Ross and Carrie. What I'm doing while listening to your podcast, relaxing before picking up my wife from work. And this is just like a picture from a, a bed um, where somebody's so lying f- down. That's so fresh. I'm like really I- very into it. It's it's Francis Reed. Oh, maybe, maybe uh, they've only been doing this for about a month or so, but I'm into this. Uh, well, first of all, I love when people send me a picture of them doing drugs because I see that. I'm like, fucking cool. Yes. Yes, my people. <laughs> I love drugs. Drugs, top notch. It's so important in, in, there's just a flood of social media presences in the world. And it's so important to establish like what's your brand, you know, what's mm-hmm. your, what's your thing. And if your thing is letting podcasts know what you're doing while you're listening Bro, to them. Bro, guys, listen, if you ever are listening to us make our jokes and you say, this seems like the kind of thing I would love to spark up to, don't be afraid. We're not fucking cops. We will not narc you out. Send me those pics of you sparking one up to our jokes. And it does, I want to be I want to be clear. It doesn't have to just be that. If you're no. also like slamming a brew, I'm gonna go ahead and say or, it's, it's explicitly sparking up a joint. I, I I want pictures of people slamming brews. Okay. Francis, Francis hasn't limited himself to that. Francis exactly. Uh, he he tweeted uh, at Julian loves music. What I'm doing while listening to your podcast. Making tuna pasta bake. That's so great. Like that's such a great account. Here's I'm gonna what give, I'm, I'm going to give the the information. W i d w i l t y p with an app before it. This is a this is a fucking good account. If you see this person tweeting, please tweet at them. Like you're crushing it. Nice right now. dude. Plays on what I'm doing jer- while listening to your podcast. Forging an axe. There's one where he's just forging an axe. Yeah, that's that's. God. Do, do, is it the different podcasts inspire him to do different things, or is he just like relegated that like I I only listen to I'm forging- Hello from the Magic Tavern yeah. while I forge an axe? Um, you- let's do a Yahoo. This one yes. was sent in by Morgan Davy. Thank you, Morgan. It's by Yahoo Answers user. Following this person right now. U2K. At U2K. Heart, heart. Who says? <laughs> Who believes Bruce Willis is a Yahoo user? Mm. I, accid- mm. I accidental found a Bruce Willis user account, and I fanboxed that user's... What? What? Is that like shadow boxing? And I fanboxed that user's and also ask him a few Q if he really is. Then he knows then he knows my husband and can answer those four Q. Over three thousand idiots answered that user's Q and many stared it, etc. How stupid are people? Can anyone in Yahoo <laughs> verify that it's him? I just called that user out. I call him um I call him um a lair. And if he could answer those four cues, I'd know for real. Okay. 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 Wait. Okay. Wait. So, all right. Wait. All right. All right. Wait. Wait. So it's basically like, tell me something only Bruce Willis would Okay. Know? So I think just sort of reading, I think this may be written in, is there a different version of, of English that, um, hand, uh, that like reads like Arabic where you're supposed to go right to left? Because that's the only way that I can sort of piece this one together. Is there a part in this question where this person says their husband knows Bruce Willis? I think it says their hu- their hubby knows Bruno, and I know so things. He- uh, he's related <laughs> information to me that only the real Bruno would know. I don't want any fake Brunos in the mix. So this person asks questions maybe about, hey, if it's really you, Bruce, tell me what my husband's favorite animal is. You would know. Do you think Bruno uses <laughs> Yahoo Answers? How else does he find stuff out? That is a good question. How do you learn stuff? Sometimes I like to think of, like, I'm I'm wishing on the same big bright star as Bruno. Because, like, I think about, like, he has to at least accidentally have stumbled onto Yahoo Answers at some point. And just, like, maybe it was the same time that I was having a session on Yahoo. We've passed 300. What if he's listening right now? What if he's listening to this going... I am a Yahoo that's too user. Much, that's I too found much to it ask. through your show. No, that's too much to ask. I'm, I would just be happy to know that we have both used the same website at a certain point. You've probably both used Google. 
What do you think is a better album title? Okay. Bruce Willis's The Return of Bruno mm-hmm. or Aerosmith's Honkin' on Bobo? Between those two, which is the better album title? Bruno, if if we could somehow oof, do like a gray album mashup of the two, honk, of, uh, honkin', honkin, on, uh, honkin' on Bruno. Honkin' on Bruno, yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and thank you, Justin, for that mind voyage that just discovered the name of episode 302 of My Brother, My Brother, and Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of harmonica work by Steven Tyler on Honkin' on Bobo. Yeah. And I know, you, I know you might be thinking, where did you get that fucking crazy name? Joe Perry stated in a radio interview, we just know that it's a phrase that sounds jazzish, jazzish, nastyish. So it works for us. It is now. I wouldn't say it was nastyish. I would just say remove the ish from that. It's just plain nasty. Think of it. Think of it. Here's boy. a fun, nasty Joe This Perry. is a fun sort of thought experiment. A thought experiment. Um, think of a sex act that could not be described as honking on Bobo. <laughs> now write it down on a piece of paper and mail it to P.O. Box. <laughs> yeah. But but stuff? No. 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 It's like the universal sex solvent. Like everything everything can fit into Honk on Bobo. Billy, a Billy job? I think that might be the actual definition of honking on Bobo. Yeah. All of them. All of them. Just like uh, just like really effing the S out of a clown? That's a little on the nose. And it would be on the nose. Uh the return of Bruno was an album released by Bruce Willis. If it don't kill you, it just makes you stronger. Yeah. It's an album by Bruce Willis. Excellent. And his third album released in 1999 is 99, Well, it's, it's classic Bruce Willis. So they've apparently taken some of the biggest hits from his first two albums and, and turned it into sort of a greatest hits cla- called classic Bruce Willis. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Did he name his first album Return of Bruno? Uh yes, Travis. He did do this thing you said. Now was this a was he this put a, return in yes. his first album? Now yes. can I just real quick can we establish was it a Chris Gaines fugue state? Or was this the same this this is a Bruce Willis you know and love? Only this time he do, he's doing something a little bit different, which is to say he's honking on Bobo. There's no, he. It was a tie-in with Hudson Hawk. It is okay. So the return of Bruno. Oh boy, we're really getting into it now. Huh? <laughs> you gotta go deep because, like, I've been obsessed with the new album forever. Apparently, there was also a a, a, a one-hour HBO special. It is a mockumentary starring Bruce Willis as his fictitious <gasps> alter ego, oh, shit. Bruno Rattellini. It was indeed a Chris Gaines fugue state. Oh shit! Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? Fuck, dude. Um Do you know that this motherfucker covered Secret Agent Man? Yeah, we're I can't on I literally album? Can't. I'm looking at my copy of Surrogates right now and I'm weeping and we need to move on because it's starting to hurt. Um is he a Yahoo answers user? Has he ever said <laughs> I, mean, I would have said no before? Yeah. I'm starting to feel very He might not be, but Bruno might be. Br- maybe Bruno oh man, no, I don't use it, but Bruno, he loves it. What? He won't shut up about it. Won't shut up about it. I don't even know how to use a computer. It's a computer. It's a computer. Bruce. It's pronounced a computer. Um, I'm just looking at <laughs> on Yahoo. Oh, what'd you find? <laughs> it's just a fucking look on, he's giving on this album cover. No, it's very it's like, good. It's like, oh yeah, it's me, Brucey boy. And I'm here to sing you some tunes. It's me on back. I'm Bruno. Um, it should be like in a. It's a Bruce Willis solo album. The only acceptable look is like penance. Like yeah. I'm sorry. I know you bought this because you enjoy my acting. Do you, do you like the song Secret Agent Man? I'm just like I did a quick Yahoo search for Bruce Willis Bruno on Yahoo Answers. Found this mm-hmm. one is by uh, Yahoo Answers user. Sorry, something's gone wrong. Is Bruce Willis a good singer? Do you remember the return of Bruno in the '90s? Do you remember the cover version of Under the Boardwalk he did? So this could ostensibly be Bruno asking the mm-hmm. question. Um, somebody says I am sure he's a good of a singer as he is a Yahoo Answers user. Lol. So this is eight years ago. I'm starting to think there may be a little bit of credibility. Somebody says, uh, "Yes, a good bedroom singer." 
the fuck, dude? What? What does that mean? He's thirsty, he's thirsty, what? thirsty for that bobo. <laughs> when he's honking that bobo, he's really, uh, really going to town lyrically. His cover of "Under the Boardwalk" was the number two massive smash in the UK. Hey, it's hey, the UK. Are you okay? <laughs> right now? Are you doing all right? Seems like you made Bruce Willis a big a big singing sensation over there with this cover of a hundred and fifty year old song. In yeah. episode I just Googled Yahoo Answers Bruce Willis, we are one of the top results because apparently in episode seventy four of My Brother, My Brother and Me, we addressed the question, How can I get o- how can I overcome my fear of Bruce Willis? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to read a question, Justin? Yeah, I'd love that. Recently I helped a friend move working for about six hours for no compensation other than a promised dinner that never came. While helping carry a TV downstairs, I tripped over a hole in the sidewalk and hit the TV into the ground. It looked fine till I plugged it in when we saw what looked like green ooze. <laughs> it's turning a goosebumps book. Um, we saw what looked like green ooze dripping down the picture. I just the cover, yeah, and it's two boys sitting on a couch while green ooze comes out of a TV, and then underneath it, in that goosebumps font, it just says, I fucked up. And that's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Derek, by R.L. Stein. Oh, fuck, Derek. I really goobered it up this time, bud. I, I goosed your bums. I'm sorry, Dan. Why is there Greek in the TV? What? Okay. Slime time, colon. I done fucked up. Derek. <laughs> um, okay. It looked fine until I plugged it in. Well, we saw it look like green news dripping down the picture on the top right. What do I owe my friend? <laughs> I offered my slightly smaller TV, a 45 inch, to replace the 50 inch I damaged, but he wants to replace it with a new one. How much should I contribute to a $450 replacement for a mistake I made while helping for free? That's from Alex Martin. Are you going to say none? None dollars? None. None dollars, right? None. Like, if he had wanted somebody who wouldn't break his shit, he should have hired a professional. It's like kind of the, the risk of, like, moving. Yeah, when you, mean, when you roll up to help a friend move, you're like, hey, so uh, do you want the $50 Derek insurance plan? <laughs> So if I break yeah. into your, you give me fifty dollars. If I break into your shit, I'll replace. That's not how any of that works. That's not how any of the like you've carried a TV in your life. What like maybe ten times? Like oh, I I tell you this is a damn sight short of like ten thousand hours. You need to be an expert TV carrier. They yeah. should have known better. I um, I would say that especially if your friend it, and it doesn't sound like from the question isn't asking you to pay for it. I think that you don't have to feel any kind of guilt or uh, over any kind of like remorse about what happened because you know accidents happen. Now, That's if you had like got really nervous. mad because no pizza was delivered and you smashed the TV on the ground, yeah, it's a different yeah, but, scenario. Yeah, I, and I, also the fact that they, he doesn't want to replace it with the um, forty-five inch tells me this is just somebody who's got a hankering to buy a new TV, and it's yeah. pretty exciting. They might have put that green ooze on there themselves because it doesn't make a damn lick of sense otherwise. Oh, you think they I'm maybe they jellied sure up? Not, maybe they, they jellied they up the jellied TV. Up the base before you started carrying it and mm-hmm. then slippy slip slip mm-hmm. on that raspberry jam oops daisies oops daisies well that's on you derek here's the tv i want i have a coupon for it right here in my pocket isn't that weird so i think weird. you're gonna want to go with this 50 inch uh the blacks are real black it's got really good clarity uh the sound's just amazing and there's just plenty of green ooze in there <laughs> now you want to be careful because if that green ooze gets loose uh, it will ruin the TV and curse you forever. You but cannot destroy. You're the gonna love the definition. Everything, everything you do to destroy this, let's just call it what it is, monster blood, uh, is only gonna make it double in size and volume. But that's 1082p. So that's, like yeah. that ooze Think gets you it. that two extra p's, and nobody's quite sure what p's are still like to this day. Um, but I think they, when you're watching the Civil War on it, it just makes it. You're gonna <laughs> love it. This, but again, it makes if red- it is free if it is released. It's going to eat your friends. It's going to eat your babysitter. And every person that eats, it's going to make it more insane. Your dog's going to eat some of it, and it's going it's, to it's gonna taste like lime jello. But then that dog, kiss goodbye. Yeah, it's going to turn into a monster dog, and you're going to have to kill it with a pickaxe. Yep. It'll be $450, please. <laughs> this is a good book. I, by the way, I'd read this book. <laughs> My favorite um, Goosebumps books are mm-hmm. Camp Nightmare, the Choose Your Own Adventure one set in the amusement park, and then slime time. Oops, Derek, I fucked up. <laughs> TV well, shopping. My favorite is The Beast, which is a book Arl Stein wrote but does not. Is it because it's set in Kings Island, uh, a favorite haunt of ours Ooh. as a young man. But uh, it is not 
it is not in the officially licensed Goosebumps franchise. I guess you could say. I like, it's, it's too explicit. I like yeah. his sex romp, Fifty Shades of Green. And this one is, they have sex with monster blood? Okay. Well, listen, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for listening to our program, My Brother, My Brother, and Me. That one Don't is, go that anywhere. One we have off. huge news. Huge news. Oh, sorry. Yes. Don't turn. Don't change that dial. This is huge. Uh, this is huge. We're we are we've got two big, big, big live shows, and they're happening very, very, very soon. Uh, unnervingly soon, I would say. Uh, on um, well, Travis, why don't you tell everybody? I, you seem very excited about it. Um, it is June third and June fourth. So like in three less than weeks, a, less than a fucking now. month. Yeah. Um, on June 3rd, Friday, June 3rd, we are going to be in Washington, D.C. And it, on June 4th, we are going to be in New York City. Um, um, I know tickets- I know. We, we should have maybe been more explicit last time. I feel bad, actually, on how much we goofed on people. Um, but we've never been to Washington, D.C. before, and we have a ton of, of listeners there. And At least I fucking hope we do. Yeah. 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 Barry I mean, Obama hope. called and said, please come do a show. I really want to see uh, it. So and like, D- what are we going to do? Say no? D.C., June 3rd. Uh, we're going to be at the Lincoln Theater. You can find tickets for that show at uh, bit.ly slash mbmbamdc2016. Bit of a convoluted Earl, but I bet it's the well, best. That's we only because could... I assume we'll be doing DC in 2017 and 2018 and 2019 sure. when everybody rolls up and shows us a- their love. Again, I would say Lincoln... we'll never go again, so you better make it count. <laughs> again, Lincoln Theater, June 3rd, Friday, June 3rd, bit.ly slash mbmbamdc2016. Uh, and then New York City, Saturday, June fourth. New York City. Okay, uh, we're gonna like be at Bikani. we're gonna be at the PlayStation Theater, which is very exciting. Can't wait to hang out with Crash Bandicoot. Playing Uncharted Four. Can't wait to hang out with Crash Bandicoot, all my friends. Uh, that's <laughs> bit.ly slash mbmbam nyc twenty sixteen. You can find tickets for there. And when do the tickets uh, when do the tickets go on sale, Trav? They go on sale f- May thirteenth. That's this Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. So last um, time we last j- time we j- came to New York, we played at a theater that was like ninety seats, and we sold out literally instantly. The PlayStation Theater is much much bigger. Um, I have no idea how quickly they're going to sell in DC, uh, but hopefully it won't be as big a shit show. But we cannot add extra shows to the docket. It's just these two. So get get your tickets fast. Um, and yeah, also, and just know that in the past, like we don't put the tickets on sale; they go on sale from the venue. Um, so that noon, like we tried to really push the people to wait till noon, but it wouldn't hurt maybe to start checking in fifteen minutes beforehand just to see if they're live yet. Um, we've had uh, issues with that in the past, so just a we heads up. also uh, are. It's not just going to be us; that would be boring. Um, we are going to be joined at both shows by uh, Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine that I co-host with my wife, Sydney. And we've got special podcast guests for different for both of the shows, right? Yes, yes. that is correct. In New York City, you're going to be able to see Still Buffering before Sawbones. And then in D.C., you're going to get to see Schmanners, Schmanners. Uh, which is the show that I do with my wife about etiquette in the modern world. Uh, it'll be our first live show. We're very, very, very excited. Yeah, first for Still Buffering, too. So that's going to be huge. Big, big shows. Three podcasts for the price of one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, if you want to see a live Rose Buddies, you tell me what the fuck that looks like. You tell me how to <laughs> just, You just tell me how the, the fuck can do that. Do we spend an hour making the audience watch an episode of The Bachelor before we talk about it? I don't know. I don't know. It's the eternal so puzzle. We will also, we'll also tweet when the tickets go live. Um, so just, just don't sure. sleep on it, because I'm pretty sure they're reserved seats. So yeah. Like, don't sleep on yeah. it. Just, like, buy your tickets. Um, don't miss out. If you got questions for us, send to mbmbam at maximumfun.org. Uh, Travis already mentioned McElroyShows.com. There's a lot of other great Max Fun shows. Beef and Dairy Network is, like, Super my, good. my favorite new thing. It's so funny. Uh, listen to it. Uh, oh, it's, like, I, 10 minutes long. I also want to say, Dear Hank and John, the podcast that Hank Green and John Green do, they've plugged us a couple times, and it's a really great show. It is a fantastic show. they're absolutely lovely people. It's like, our, yeah, like, it's like our show if we were geniuses. Like, had anything yeah. to fucking offer the world. Uh, I basically. got to hang out with Hank. Uh, he did an episode of uh, Can I Pick Your Dog? And he's just an oh, absolutely lovely I don't human doubt being. It. Yeah, um, so thank I, you to them, and go check out their show. Uh, thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song, It's a Departure, off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Um, it is such a good album. I started listening to uh, When I Pretend to Fall a lot, which is weird. It's not usually a summer album. That's more of a fall-winter album for me, but uh, 
Uh, it's a wonderful album. Go go check it out. Uh, and uh, we have merch on Max Fun Store. It's maxfunstore.com. You can find it all there. Perfect. That's going to do it for us. Griffin, do you have a final Yahoo to send us out? Hell yeah. So it's sent in by Riding High, Zoe Kinski. Thank you, Zoe. It's by Yahoo Answers user Brian Cohen, who asks, If animals don't want to be eaten, why are they made of food? <laughs> I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. Then my brother, my brother, and me kiss your dad square on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. You guys, I'm so excited to introduce to you my new baby, Getting Curious with Jonathan Van Ness. This is going to be a really fun look at things that I find curious, whether it's a menstrual cup, it might be the Romanoff family, it might be fracking, it could be Carly Fiorina. I don't even know. Who knows? It's going to be whatever I think is interesting. I can't wait to bring it to you guys. We're going to be bringing in content experts. I'm going to be learning the things. It's only going to take about 30 minutes for you to expand your baby brains with me and have a super fun time. So I can't wait to see you on our first episode of Getting Curious.